Isn't it interesting that Indonesia's economic growth has remained robust in spite of the global economy slowdown? Its inflationary pressures have remained controlled, public finances have grown stronger, and the fiscal deficit has frequently fallen below the regulatory threshold. This has made Indonesia a great example of a resilient economy. More so, it has had a tremendous effect on the global economy. This makes us wonder, how did Indonesia become so powerful, and how is this affecting the whole world? Before we go on, do like this video and subscribe to the channel. The truth is, Indonesia has not always been so strong and powerful. In fact, before the Asian economic crisis struck in 1997, Indonesia's GDP ranked 22nd in the world. Then the economy contracted in 1998, but resumed growing in 1999 on the back of an increased government and consumer spending. But subsequent years of economic growth has elevated Indonesia into the top 20 world economies, earning its membership of the G20 Group of Nations. After a significant setback prompted by the Asian economic crisis of the late 1990s, Indonesia's economy began accelerating, with GDP growth averaging more than 5.7% a year. Today, Indonesia's success in entrenching democracy and its rapid economic growth has propelled the country into a position of regional and global power. The country has undergone immense political change, moving from authoritarian rule to a robust and vibrant democracy and building a dynamic economy after being crippled by the 1997-98 Asian financial crisis. Also, strong economic growth is helping the country achieve dramatic reductions in poverty. According to the World Bank, Indonesians living in poverty fell from 23.4% of the population to 11.3% between 1999 and 2014. This coincided with extensive growth in the number of Indonesians considered middle class. Now approaching 50 million and Indonesia's increasing investment in basic services, particularly education. This further proves the great potential the nation has a potential that has not gone unnoticed to part of the global community. Interestingly, Indonesia has a market-based economy in which government plays a significant role, including administering prices for some basic goods such as fuel, rice and electricity. In terms of value added, the industrial sector accounted for 40% of GDP in 2015. Also, significant foreign direct investment and government incentives have positioned the industry for future growth. Major industrial sectors include petroleum and natural gas, textiles and apparel, mining, footwear, plywood, rubber and chemical fertilizers. The services sector is equally as important to Indonesia's economy, accounting for about 50% of GDP. Agriculture, on the other hand, only accounts for about 16%, with its most important export commodities being oil and gas, minerals, crude palm oil, electrical appliances and rubber products. Indonesia, which doubles as Southeast Asia's largest economy, contains a number of characteristics that put it in a great position for newly advanced economic development. Moreover, in recent years there is strong support from the central government to curb Indonesia's traditional reliance on raw commodity exports while raising the role of the manufacturing industry within the economy. The nation has also received a good number of international recognition regarding its economy, one of which is the recent upgrade of the country's credit ratings by international financial services companies such as Standard & Poor's, Fitch Ratings and Moody's. This was done after noticing the resilient economic growth, low government debt and prudent fiscal management which are able to attract financial inflows into the country. This is why lately Indonesia is being described to be at the pinnacle of global leadership. This title no doubt captures the confidence of modern Indonesia, and now the nation is regarded as an upper middle income country by the World Bank, giving more proof that Indonesia is indeed on the rise. In fact, the nation has benefited from high global commodity prices in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine war. These high prices have boosted the rupiah and swelled Indonesia's current account, enabling it to outperform most economies over the past 18 months. Also, Indonesia's 5.3% GDP growth in 2022 places it among the world's best performers, but a modest reduction to that mark is forecast for 2023. Interestingly, Indonesia reported export growth of 11.7% and consumption growth of 4.5% in the first quarter of 2023. Manufacturing, transport and the food and beverage sectors registered growth of 4.4%, 15.9% and 11.6% respectively, for the same period. Inflation in Indonesia is also relatively low compared to most other countries. 
Another likely engine room of growth in Indonesia is the small business sector. It has been discovered that a whopping 80% of Indonesia's small businesses are likely to grow in 2024. The more than 64 million micro, small and medium enterprises in Indonesia have been contributing significantly to job growth and economic opportunities. No doubt the lifting of travel restrictions has helped Indonesia's small business sector to perform strongly, in line with associated boosts to tourism and private consumption. And even though most of Indonesia's small and medium businesses are growing, others are not, because they find it difficult to access external finance. To address this issue, the government is seeking to encourage business credit and financing options for small businesses, as well as enabling access to the government's procurement marketplace. This way, almost a 100% growth will be recorded in the small business sector. The role of Indonesia's state-owned enterprises is also a talking point. The nation's government has made moves in recent years to give state-owned enterprises a chance to make fundamental changes to improve their competitiveness. So the government has endorsed their clustering to increase their competitive advantage and profitability while helping them forge stronger partnerships abroad. And although state-owned enterprises are important to the economy, the government says they also have a responsibility to the state of Indonesia to ensure its profitability and sustainability. As part of its green strategy, Indonesia launched the ambitious Just Energy Transition Partnerships in 2020, with international partners including the US, the European Union, Japan and Canada. The deal will channel billions of dollars into initiatives to help Indonesia make the switch from fossil fuels. Interestingly, this green economy plans including rolling out potentially the world's largest green industrial park, to be located in North Kalimantan province. The strategy will also include retiring the nation's coal-fired power plants and replacing them with renewable energy options. Indonesia's carbon exchange will also play a big role in enabling both domestic and cross-border trading. The exchange will operate on a cap-and-trade model, allowing businesses to trade emission allowances within set pollution limits. This regulation was enacted by the Financial Services Authority and has been effective since 2023. This will no doubt influence the global climate. Talking about influencing the world, since the middle of the 20th century, Indonesia has played a modest role in the world economy, and its importance has been considerably less than its size, resources and geographic position would seem to warrant. The country is a major exporter of crude petroleum and natural gas. It is also one of the world's main suppliers of rubber, coffee, cocoa and palm oil. Interestingly, Indonesia also produces a wide range of other commodities, such as sugar, tea, tobacco, copra and spices. In fact, nearly all commodity production comes from larger states. Widespread exploration for deposits of oil and other minerals has resulted in a number of large-scale projects that have contributed substantially to the general development funds. Although Indonesia has remained a major importer of manufacturing goods, high technology and technical skills since the early 1970s, the country's economic base has shifted from the primary sector to secondary and territory industries, manufacturing, trade and services. Manufacturing surpassed agriculture in terms of contribution to gross domestic product in the early 1990s and has continued to be the largest single component of the country's economy. A single portion of the national budget has continued to be allocated to agriculture. As a result, the country has remained self-sufficient in food production for decades now. Interestingly, private enterprises have joined the government in developing Indonesia's palm oil and sugar industries, as well as its fisheries. Now, large-scale agribusiness is becoming a more important component of the country's economy, with increasing government investment. Also, export of cultivated shrimp and other products of open fishing have become a major business for middle-sized businesses feeding the world. It is true that Indonesia is doing great on the global scale. But to be frank, the country must step up its game if it wants to lead among the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or the ACAN, Economic Community AEC. Recently, the ACAN Economic Community AEC was set up as a regional economic bloc that will bring even greater competition between the 10 member states of ACAN. Now, this economic community aims to transform Southeast Asia into a single economic union for trade, labor, and investment. That said, Indonesia is lagging behind many of its neighbors in getting ready for the initiative. This means that lawmakers must change several policies, not just to comply with the AEC's standards, but also for Indonesia to compete with its neighbors, regardless of the community. Some of the necessary changes will be allowing companies in all industries to legally have majority foreign ownership, 
cutting government bureaucracy and removing protectionist barriers. Sadly, foreigners can't truly own property in Indonesia either. It's only possible to buy real estate on a freehold basis if you're a citizen, which is really limiting. But Indonesia isn't alone on this, in fact. At the moment, just two countries in Southeast Asia have reached full compliance with the ACAN Economic Communities requirements, Malaysia and Singapore. And seeing that those are also the region's two most developed economies, it's probably not coincidental that they're ahead. Yet, in spite of the obvious shortcomings, Indonesia's economy remains a spectacle, with a massive population of 250 million people, strong demographics and rising middle class, it is on its way to a vibrant future. But the truth is, it would yield so much more success if it can learn a thing or two from their neighbours. What do you think about this? Do let us know in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, where money matters. See you on the next one.